You're tuning into Black and White Sports on YouTube. The no holds barred truth on sports. The main event starts now. I'm back. Rudrance for our Black and White Sports 2. Well, we got two things, both involving Amazon. Because it seems that Nielsen, we know the ratings company that's been around forever, does the television ratings. People used to have the Nielsen boxes in their home. I don't know if they still have those or not. And uh, Amazon Prime, because they're sparring right now over what is factually accurate about the ratings. In other words, Nielsen is saying the ratings for Amazon Prime are not as high as Amazon Prime is promoting and putting out there to, in the public. Yikes. Okay. Uh, we were already skeptical due to some of the miscellaneous ratings delays. I contended. I was like, you know, I worked in IT. I've owned websites before, and Amazon Prime should know how many people watched immediately. I mean, like, literally immediately. At least... They ought to be able to have the data around through their servers within maybe 30 minutes of, of the game ending. But they know real time how many people, where you're from, all that crap to be able to report the ratings, except it was taking a while to get them. Part of that might be local television because, yeah, it's still shown on local TV. In the markets tonight, we get the Texans and the Phil, uh, Philadelphia Eagles. Going head-to-head -head against the Phillies in the World Series. That should be interesting. Streaming versus Fox. Actual three-letter word, Fox. Yeah, network television. Uh, could it be that baseball could beat the NFL tonight? That is going to be interesting. Um, also, we've got Jeff Bezos trying to buy the Washington Commanders. Now, he sniffed around very, very, very much around the Broncos. But a lot of people believe he wanted the commanders the whole time. And a lot of people are now wondering, is this a, is this a bit of a, a setup? Because a lot of people believe the NFL would love to have Bezos as an owner. Let's get to this ratings fiasco. It should be noted, by the way, that Nielsen is the ratings that the advertisers go by. Yeah, not what Amazon is telling the advertisers, but that's what they go by. This is the Associated Press. By the Nielsen company's count, 7.8 million people watched Amazon Prime's coverage of last Thursday's NFL game between New Orleans and Arizona. It's been a couple weeks ago. But Amazon says no. There were actually 8.9 million people watching. Okay, in case, you, in case you're not realizing this, and I'm sure you are, that's a 1.1 million people viewer difference. That's a ton. And if you're an advertiser, that's also a lot. So which is it? You'll have to judge for yourself. After each of its Thursday night games this season, Amazon has publicly contradicted Nielsen in this manner. One of the boldest challenges ever to a company that for generations has monopolized the count of people watching programs on television. Neither company is saying the other is wrong, but neither is backing down either. The result is confusion, most notably for advertisers. Nielsen as it has for years, follows the viewing habits in a panel of homes across the country, and from that limited sample, it derives an estimate of how many people watched a particular program. That number is currency in the media industry, meaning it is used to determine advertising rates. Amazon, in the first year of an 11-year contract to stream Thursday night games, says it has an actual count of every one of its subscribers who streams it, not an estimate. The games are also televised in the local markets of participating teams. That's about 9% of its total viewership each week, and Amazon uses Nielsen's estimate for that portion of the total. So, you're, you're saying Nielsen's inaccurate, 
but you're willing to take their word for it when it comes to the television side, the local market side. That's interesting. Quote, we wouldn't put our put out our number if we weren't, weren't comfortable with it being accurate, said Jay Marine, vice president of Amazon Prime Video and head of its sports department. Through six weeks, Nielsen says Thursday night games have averaged 10.3 million viewers. Amazon says it's averaged 12.1 million viewers. Amazon's estimate has been bigger than Nielsen each week. In case you're wondering, that's damn near 2 million viewers that they can't agree on. Quote, I don't at all believe that Amazon numbers are not right. Connie Kim, Nielsen spokesperson, and I don't believe that our numbers are not right. Okay. Since different methodologies are being used, it's no surprise that there are differences in the estimate. It's going to take a little time. As it in- evolves, it should be one number. But we're not quite there yet. For now, ad prices for Thursday games are using Nielsen's numbers. <laughs> But Amazon clearly has an incentive to let clients know that it believes more people are actually watching. You have to remember that this is new. It's new for Nielsen. And it's the first time it's been actual data for an event like this. The dispute has clear implications for the future. Streamers haven't had much incentive for measurement of daily viewing to be publicized. In part because people don't watch their shows the same way as broadcast television. They haven't needed numbers verified from third-party source for advertisers. But with Netflix about to introduce advertising, that can change very rapidly. And if other companies develop technology that can measure viewing more precisely, the precedent has now been set for publicly disputing Nielsen's numbers. Okay. So, that makes you wonder... um, I do know that Amazon Prime promised advertisers, I believe, at least 10 million viewers. Okay, so if you go by Nielsen's numbers, and we know for a fact the last three or four weeks, they haven't come close to delivering on that in in the amount of viewership. So right now, I can tell you they're under they're under delivering to what they promised advertisers. We don't know why the ratings are dropping so much. A lot of it's probably, in my opinion, has to do with some of the technology issues they had the first several weeks. And even last week, I went and looked at Twitter. People were still having video and audio issues on the stream. Jay-Z and Jeff Bezos are interested in buying the Commanders. At mid-sale exploration... Jay-Z and Jeff Bezos, two of the most successful men in America, are interested in buying the Washington Commanders in light of owner Dan Snyder's interest in selling the team. Sources tell TMZ Sports. And we're told a partnership between the men is on the table. On Wednesday, the team issued a statement announcing Snyder had hired a major bank, Bank of America, I believe, to investigate a possible opportunity to sell the team. But it made it clear he hadn't yet made a final decision. Still, the move provided hope to droves of Washington football fans who, after controversy after controversy, endlessly losing, have long wished Snyder would sell. As we're told, Jay, worth an estimated $1.3 billion by Forbes, has expressed serious interest in acquiring the team, valued at $5.6 million this summer. Despite the legend, rap legend and businessman's incredible fortune, we're told he'd look for a strategic partner. I can tell you right now, $1.3 billion is not enough to buy this franchise. It's not. N- now, enter Bezos, who's the world's richest person, basically. Bezos, one of the world's richest people, Worth an estimated one one hundred and fourteen billion net worth is also interested. Bezos has tied to the area. He owns the leftist Washington Post newspaper. Amazon also owns Prime Video, which has recently inked a multi year, multi dollar million dollar deal to broadcast TNF. Jay Z is in business with the NFL signing 
a partnership deal in 2019, which gave HOV power over the halftime show as well as social justice initiatives. Good God. Byron Allen and Robert Griffin III, among many others, have expressed interest in the team. I can tell you, I was looking at Byron Allen and Robert Griffin III. Number one, Robert Griffin III ain't worth nearly enough. I mean, he could buy maybe a sliver of the team. You know, a very, very, very minute, small percentage. And now Byron Allen's got some... He was he was in on the Broncos. Uh, neither one of those guys can touch Bezos whatsoever. Not even close. Can't even come close to him. Uh, if he wants to buy the thing, and a lot of people kind of believe that the NFL knows where this is going already and that's why there's been so much pressure applied to Dan Snyder because they know Bezos is waiting in the weeds and they're trying to push this franchise in his direction. Now that's just speculation but well it didn't take him long. It went up for sale yesterday and yes it is for sale. Went up for sale yesterday. Report he's in right now. Trying to do his homework on the on the commanders. Word has it, there might be a new version of RFK Stadium coming. That's kind of interesting, isn't it? I got a cat that just knocks something over. Great. Peace, I'm out. Till next time, Black and White Network supporters, make sure you go over and check out the Black and White Network merchandise store. 25% off USA First. 25% off USA First. Go now. Thanks for watching the show. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Be sure to tune in next time on Black and White Sports.